Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to get you started with Laser GRBL and LightBarn, two of the most common controlling softwares for desktop laser engravers. Which one should you choose? Let's find out. Alright, so for this demonstration I'm going to set up the uh, brand new NJ3 Pro. However, what I'm about to show you will basically work uh, with any other desktop laser engraver. If you have some machine that uh, seems more difficult to pair it up, um, and this is where, for example, the machine from the second series from Nege, I got you covered. I have a dedicated video uh, showing you how to actually get started with that kind of machine, specifically uh, with softwares like Lightbarn. All right, now, without wasting any more time, let's get right uh, into it and our first software is going to be laser grbl now laser grbl it's a free software however it's available only on windows they are work around to let it work on both mac and linux but they are not as straightforward and uh, definitely i'm not going to show you that uh, in this video the software can be downloaded uh, from lasergrbl.com it is fairly straightforward just click on this big download button and then follow a typical installation process for Windows. And so I'm not going to show you that because I believe that most of you will be able to actually download and install uh, a software from the internet. So once you're done with that, it is time to launch the software. And so let's do it right now. And this is how the software looks like. Let's enlarge it. Now, uh, this software is going to allow you to control your machine and to do way more things than what you were capable with softwares like Nege, for example. In my previous few videos, I've been covering both the Nege desktop application and the Nege mobile application. Um, and if you are experiencing them or if you have had experience with them, you know that they are primitive, very limited application, and especially when it comes to custom projects and so with laser grbl we are now opening a new world because you are able to basically design your own um, custom projects uh, with vectorial softwares like inkscape which is um, a free open source software and uh, you are seeing it right here um, and so um, this is very good because you can basically do whatever you want uh, now uh, the software is not going to be as good as Lightbarn in terms of customization and control. However, there are workarounds for everything and you can basically do pretty complex projects with Laser GRBL as well. All right, now let me walk you very quickly through the interface. Now, in the center part, you see uh, the canvas. That's where uh, the preview of your project is going to be generated and on the top right corner you see the coordinate okay then over to the left um, you see on the top region you see connection related uh, stuff file name progress number of passes play then here in the center you see uh, the console this is um, the code that we will basically uh, send to the machine you will see it as the machine works or you do something with it then down you have the job tools uh, these are tools to manually move uh, the machine around, the laser somewhere around. Uh, then down you have the uh, line counts, so that's how many lines are in your project. And the buffer and the estimated time, okay? Then over here you have some control buttons as well as custom buttons. These are buttons that you also can create yourself. As you can see over here, this is my own button. Then on the bottom right corner, you will see um, overrides um, controls uh, for both speeds and power, the stages, which right now is disconnected, and then you've got the stop and resume buttons over here. Okay, let's now get it connected. Um, over here, uh, next to come, you have the drop down, select your machine. Depending on how many machines you have currently connected, you will have more or less options, so you will need to uh, do a little bit of guess there in my case i know that the uh, content is the machine that i'm trying to connect and about rate which for most desktop laser engraver is 
115200 and over here you got the connect button and now we are uh, connected now the first thing you will want to do once you are connected um, if you have a machine with a home is to go ahead and click on home which is this button over here so once you click that you will see that the machine will move will pull on one direction on one corner and that's where its home position is now uh, if you're following my channel I've been explaining many times a machine with a home it's basically a machine where there are physical micro switches um, where the laser module can go okay the laser head can move and that will represent the actual physical home of the machine homeless machine uh, will actually not have this option and you work with them in a slightly different way but what I'm about to show you will basically work uh, with both type of machine the only difference is that you won't have most likely this button showing up all right so uh, once we are connected what we want to do first this is the most exciting moment is to control your machine so go over to the jog tool click one of the buttons and you can see that the machine is moving under our control now over here to the left you will see the feed rate so if you want the machine to move slower or faster and over here on the right you get the steps these are the number of millimeter uh, that the machine is going to move uh, at each single click all right now uh, let's load in a file and let's do something now this software will read pretty much any kind of software and actually if we go over to file open file uh, you can see over here we have uh, this drop down and you can see their g-code supported raster images which are like png and jpeg vector which is .svg this is uh, the file extension of inkscape files and then laser grbl projects okay uh, let's start out with uh, an image so that i can show you some cool stuff now this is the import raster um, option window okay so here you can basically manipulate your image to look the way you want now um, I'm not going into details in this um, uh, starter tutorial um, if you're interested to learn more about the software there are many things that you can do with it I have a full series of in-depth video tutorial um, and so if you're interested in that I'll put the link in the description below and you can go ahead and look that up and there is everything that you will need to know to work with images vectors G codes and so on all right so here uh, you will basically be able to do mani um, simple manipulation like brightness brightness and contrast okay um, then you have the conversion tools this is the type of tool that is going to be used uh, for the actual engraving actually let me put down back this one so we can see the image okay um, now line to line tracing is going to go basically line back and forth um, every tool that you will select in this uh, section here will also have some options so as you can see we got the direction here diagonal we can put it down to horizontal now it will scan like this and the quality the quality represent how many lines per millimeter so how many lines you want the laser to engrave in each vertical millimeter so in general i use between five and eight lines per millimeter this yields a, a decent result okay um so you got line to line tracing uh this option uses power modulation or dynamic power which will be available um in most newer lasers um the second option this is the one that i usually use for images uh, it's the dithering. Dithering is basically going to create dots which mimics pixels and under the option you can see we have the Actinson, Floyd, Bergs, Jarvis is the one that I normally recommend also here you can change the direction to vertical and diagonal okay horizontal usually is the one to go it's faster uh, and the quality uh, we can leave it to five um, other than that we got vectorized this is not applicable for this type of image is applicable for logo type of image or center line like for text so as you can see you got a big mess there and pass through is basically the same like 
line to line tracing okay it's not even going to apply these parameters here as you can see they've been grayed out okay so let's go back to jetbring now there is no rule of thumb on how you're going to manipulate your image for the best uh, engraving results it all depends on the actual image that you are loading in so that means um, the level of details uh, the contrast the brightness uh, the colors uh, and so on and so forth now over here to the bottom you can uh, uh, rotate or flip the image and you can also crop the image if you want like this just drag across as you can see or invert the color once you're happy with your choice just go over to next now here is where you're going to set the uh, size the speed the power and the position now let's first talk about the size and the position which are on the bottom now, um, if you want to get the parameters which are in the file itself that you've been loading, you can go over to Auto Size and then you can click on this EXIF which will pull the metadata out of the file itself. And so as you can see, it's a 96 dpi image. Um, and this will basically engrave the image at the size of the original file. However, if you want to go for custom, you just uncheck this auto size and here you can set your parameter your dimensions so let's say for example we want to be 200 millimeters um, as you can see this is locked so automatically the ratio between the width and the height is locked and this is going to work out then the offset represent where is going to be the uh, reference point in your image um, you will often want to be one of the corners and the most common is the bottom left however if you want you can also put it at the center by clicking this button over here okay um, after that we can uh, go to check the speed now the speed usually for engraving images and not cutting you can go at a very high speed i normally go between 3000 and uh, 5000 millimeters per minute um, and so we can leave it to 5000 for this example uh, then under the laser option you have the laser mode that's what I was talking earlier if you were to choose the line to line tracing you need dynamic power or also called power modulation which is this M4 um, however for jittering this is not necessary you could go to constant power now the software will actually uh, manage this automatically so you can just leave it to M4 and then the software will do the rest and now here you can choose your power now in general you will choose your maximum power which is 10 times the percentage that you want so as you can see we got a 90 percent but the value is 900 and you can also set the minimum power so if you want lighter area to be engraved deeper or darker you can uh, for example set up this to say a hundred so not less than 10 percent okay and once you're happy with that you can go ahead and click on create this will take some time to process the image and to generate your g-code which will then show up in the canvas and as you can see we have our reference point uh, to the center over here um, now I will show you why it is important to set the offset uh, elsewhere in one of the corners in a little while um, so if you are happy with the image um, then you can go ahead and click on play okay uh, let me now load another image which is an SVG file directly from Inkscape so let's go over to file open file um, keychains triple clef and open that up now uh, when you load in SVGs um, you are prompt to simply select the speed and the uh, power and so in this case I would like to go for uh, 250 90% I think that's pretty uh, okay all right so let's click on create and as you can see our file is ready now there is a whole discussion on how to actually prepare the file on Inkscape to be ready here but that's uh, for another video once you're ready with it um, it is time to prepare uh, the machine so to put the material uh, under to adjust the height for the focus and then to uh, start engraving all right so as you can see i've loaded a piece of scrap in my engraving area and now the first thing you will want to do is to locate uh, the point where you want the laser engraving to start 
or cutting in this case. And so to do that, you will want to use your jog tool. So let me crank this down. A bit more down. A bit more. All right. Now, once you are at the spot where you think uh, you got enough space, you can set your custom zero point by clicking over to this button, okay? And now it is time to frame your design. That means to show uh, the outline where it's going to take place so that you can make sure that you have enough space for it. So let me click on frame, which is over here. And as you can see, we have a decent amount of space for it. Now, this is where it comes handy to have the origin over here in one of the corners, because as you can see, I position myself somewhere, taking in mind on how much space I need going up and going to the right, so that I don't have to consider how much uh, space I need in all the direction if I'm at the center, for example, okay? So once you're happy with it, you can uh, go ahead and play. However, before to do that, one more step. Uh, this number here represents the number of passes. So this is normally um, going to be used for ticker material where you cannot go through in a single pass, but you will need two, three, four, five, five passes to go to cut through. Now, in my case, I'm cutting a three millimeters playwood uh, with a 10 watt uh, optical power output laser engraver. I'm not using air assist, that means there is no compressed air, which will actually help. And so I'm going to click on play. And now this will start the engraving. If you do not have any air assist, I would recommend you at least to put a fan blowing across. This will help out with the cutting and with making a clean product. Now, if you are seeing that your engraving result is not coming out uh, great, here over to the override, you can increase a little bit the power, for example, or you can make it a little bit slower, okay? This will basically uh, increase the overall uh, power for the laser or will make um, the image less dark. It all depends on the actual situation, but it's good for you to know that you have such option to do uh, a changes on the fly while the machine is actually engraving. All right, so now, for example, I don't need this name. So uh, if you want to stop anywhere, you can simply come over to the corner here and to click on stop. And this will basically uh, put the machine on hold okay uh, so then what you can do you can basically go ahead and clear everything up and then what I suggest you is you can basically go home okay and now we can see what's the result All right, so as you can see, the software is uh, fairly straightforward to use. Um, it is not so advanced as the next software, uh, but it's a very good uh, way to actually uh, work with your machine. Let's now jump into Light Barn. Now, this video turns out to be a little bit longer, and so I'm going to actually uh, split it into two parts. Um, so in the upcoming part, the part two, you will see uh, the part that covers Light Barn, and then I'll give you my feedback um, about which software you should choose. All right. For the time being, thanks for watching this part one, and let's see you in the next part.